What's up? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys a foliage on red and copper hair, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do my gray touch-ups with a foliage and how we blend it all together, so stay tuned. Alright, welcome to this video. I'm really excited to be doing this particular hair color transformation. In fact, this is actually my aunt, and I haven't gotten to do her hair in a long time since I stopped taking clients in the salon, so I'm really stoked to be getting my hands on her hair, and it's been a while since she's had her hair done. She's been kind of doing some touch-ups at home. She hasn't gotten her hair cut in a long time, and so today we're gonna be touching up her gray, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I blend in my foliage pieces in with a gray root touch-up, and particularly on red hair. A lot of you guys have asked for different colors versus just blondes and brunettes, and so I wanted to show you guys how to do this with red hair, copper hair. I'll give you a hint, it's not much different, but I still wanted to show you guys exactly how I do my toning on red hair with the copper, and how we incorporate a lot of those warmer tones in there. So, let's get started. All right, so this is our before. You guys can see we are kind of starting with a blank canvas, which is really nice. She has really kind of grown out hair. We're gonna give her some soft layers, but for the color, we're going to be touching up her gray and then adding some dimension back into this hair. There's not a lot of dimension going on. It's kind of feeling one color. And as you guys know with redheads, we wanna make sure that we're adding that dimension and giving some light to reflect off of. So I'm excited to really refresh this redhead and share with you guys kind of the formulas for how I do that and how I go about uh, tackling somebody with red hair because it doesn't have to just be all over one color. We can actually add in a lot more dimension with this technique. All right, so we're gonna go in and we're first going to attack her gray hair. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna take 20 volume, and if you guys have never seen Goldwell, this is actually a really cool system that they have. I'm gonna do about 60 mils of developer, 20 volume, and then I'm gonna do half of my formula is gonna be 5NN, which is our double N pigment, and then my other half of my formula is gonna be equal parts 6K and 6, uh, 5RB, excuse me. So we'll do about 30 mils of 5NN. We'll just pump it right in there. And then we're gonna do 15 mils of 6K and 15 mils of 5RB. And I love this system because you can literally see right kind of in there where your line is at and it keeps everything really clean. So um, I've always used Goldwell for especially my reds, especially for my permanent color. Um, I've always really liked it and it just keeps everything super clean. You're not messing with tubes and it actually makes it so fast when you're having to mix lots of color for your clients and uh, turn clients around really fast. So we're just gonna mix it up and we're gonna go apply this. All right, so because we're putting permanent color at her roots, I always use a pre-guard cream. I love this one from Wella. Um, you guys can get it at Cosmoprof or just from Wella themselves. And basically I'm going to kind of put it on my glove just like that and I'm going to apply it to her skin to protect it from getting that color on there. If you guys have ever had clients that stain really easily, um, anytime I'm doing a permanent color on the skin, even if it's like a level eight or something, I always apply a pre-guard cream, and this is really gonna help us get it off, especially when we're dealing with darker colors and especially with redhead pigment. So I always kind of do it around here and even get it underneath, um, kind of down by their neck area. All right, so I'm gonna go in. I never section out before I do my gray, and I just start applying it based off of where they part their hair. Now, the biggest thing that you wanna make sure of is obviously keeping your sections clean, but you do wanna make sure that you're fully saturating the hair, especially clients that have um, stubborn gray. She tends to have some stubborn gray sometimes. A lot of redheads, especially when you're adding in kind of that warm pigment, can have that stubborn gray, so making sure to really, really saturate it. And one of the things that I was actually taught as an assistant is almost to lay the color down versus squishing it down. So you guys will see me, I just kind of lay it in there, and that's why I mix up almost 120 mils of color versus the standard 40 mils and 40, you know, 40 mils of developer, 40 mils of color. I almost double that um, because I do use a lot of color to make sure that I'm getting that gray coverage. So if you're struggling with gray coverage, sometimes it's not necessarily the color line, it could be the fact that it wasn't saturated enough. So I'm going to start this quadrant, we're gonna go down this way, then I'm gonna go back, and we're gonna work on the other quadrant. All right, so now I'm on to the other side, and you guys can see a little bit closer here as I just kind of lay that color in there. 
And as I continue down this entire section, I do go back through when I pull the section, obviously I'm putting it all the way up, and then when I pull it back down, I'll show you guys exactly how I kind of resaturate and just double check, um, because again, especially around this front hairline, that's where people tend to be more gray and tend to be sometimes more resistant, and so you gotta make sure that you're double checking this stuff because nothing's worse than a client coming back saying, ugh, it didn't cover, or as you're blow drying them, seeing those grays still kind of showing through, and a lot of times it has stuff to do with application, not necessarily the color line. I come back and bring this section down, I'm checking, just sometimes adding just a little bit more color onto my brush and just resaturating. I'm obviously not going in as um, fine tooth as I was before. And you guys can see she actually had a little bit of gray kind of up in here, so I am just kind of dragging that color down. Um, she's been kind of touching up her hair herself the last couple times she's done it, so that can just sometimes be um, the color or uh, you know missing spots. So I'm just kind of dragging that down. But going back through and just resaturating that area is really, really important. All right, so now that I've kind of gotten back to where her hairline is, what I like to do is before I move on to the back section, just go through and really kind of lay color down. I'm not wiping it away, I'm actually saturating it around her face more because a lot of times these are the little grays that like to pop out. And then what I like to do is I like to just go through and clean it up with my towel. So I'll just take my little towel here. Again, that's another reason why we use that pre-guard cream and just really make that line really clean because nothing's worse than when a client is sitting there staring at themselves in the mirror while they're processing and they've got a glob of color there and they're thinking automatically, oh my gosh, I'm gonna start staining. So I always like to clean that up before I even move on to the back. All right, so now we've got to the back section. What I like to do is, because I didn't section out my sections before, I like to just make sure to clean that line up so I know exactly what I've already touched with the color and what I haven't. And so I'll go through and just kind of clean this up right here, just kind of apply it along that line. But then I also like to take just a foil and lay it down right here. And the reason why is as we're pouring or pulling this hair forward, I don't want the hair to land on that hair that was previously colored. So um, this just keeps my sections really clean and making sure that I'm not adding color into something right here by laying it over and squishing it in there. So we're gonna go down through the head and uh, do the exact same technique all the way down till we get to the bottom. All right, so I'm going to mix up some of her lightener. We're gonna be kind of doing a foliage kind of um, sectioning on her. So I'm gonna mix up quite a bit because she doesn't have any lighter pieces in there. And I'm gonna be doing 30 volume. And the reason why is um, her roots have already been sitting on for about you know five, 10 minutes since we applied them. So I'm gonna start with 30 volume. I don't think we need to go um, less than that. And then I'm also going to be using Olaplex in there as well. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Olaplex. And I'm also going to be using, if you've ever seen any of my other foil videos um, I use a blending agent well because she already has roots applied we're going to mix up just a little bit more of her color and we're gonna use that as her blending agent so I'm gonna quick mix up here can't say my words today I'm gonna mix up here and then we will take you over and I'm gonna show you guys my sectioning on what we're gonna do with her All right, so I went through, we applied the rest of her roots, and you guys can see it kind of dragged down about an inch down, which I love. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to start her uh, face framing pieces. So we're gonna start with the way that I normally do my foliage when I get to the front, but we're actually starting in the front this time because we're not doing a ton of foliage pieces. So you guys can see I took about three quarters to an inch uh, deep section, and I'm going to take my first piece here, um, and this will be kind of just about a highlight width um, uh, deep, I guess, is how you could say it. We're gonna weave that out. And if you've seen any of my other foliage videos, this is gonna look really, really familiar. But the thing that's gonna be a little bit different with this one is I am gonna take a longer foil this time. A lot of times I take a shorter foil. We don't want the lightness to come all the way up uh, super close to her face, so I am gonna be dragging down our color. So I'm gonna take my original color that we had for her roots and just kind of paint it down a little bit. And this is gonna be my blending agent, like I just mentioned. So we're gonna go in with my lightener and apply this in. Now, 
Uh, a lot of this is gonna be cut. We're gonna be cutting her hair. We're gonna get, give her some face framing pieces. So um, not a huge deal. I still like to always saturate just in case uh, you know, we don't cut as much off, so just be aware, but when you're designing the color and cut, sometimes you don't have to always saturate those ends, but personally for me, I like to. So I'm going to now blend that up into that root color that we just had here. And you guys can see, I'm kind of doing it about, you know, maybe three inches away from the scalp. And I am gonna fold this one up just so that it's not so heavy on her face. But just be aware that when we're folding it back up, we're not squishing it back onto the hair that wasn't, uh, that didn't have color into it. And you, gotta, you wanna be careful because now we are squishing color onto her face. So just be aware that you are sometimes going to have to go back in and re-clean that up with a towel. Um, we'll skip our section here. And I'm gonna keep doing this until I get to the hairline. So probably about three or four of these pieces and foils here. So now I got to the front, so I am gonna go through and just clean up this uh, piece right here. I am going to uh, still get that, but you do wanna make sure that you're taking care of your clients and cleaning them up. Obviously this can be a little bit more of a tricky service. Sometimes it does get a little bit um, forward there. So just be aware of that, just being really clean with your sectioning there and making sure to keep it nice and clean. I'm gonna take this little piece and just kinda of pull it off to the side so that that doesn't happen. And uh, now we're gonna go through, we're gonna do this last piece for our face framing, and then I'm gonna show you guys the sides. All right, so now I've gotten to the sides, and again, this is just very similar to a lot of my foliage technique videos. So I'm gonna take kind of my baby light section, and being just really aware of that piece that I do pull out, just kind of laying it gently down so that we're not squishing it against her face and getting that color everywhere. I'm gonna take one of my smaller foils here um, to lock it into place, and I actually don't feel like I need to drag the color down here because it actually has um, been dragged down just by the comb, kind of combing it out. So I'm gonna go in with my lightener, and we're gonna end up doing two of these pieces back to back for our face framing. And I want you guys to know that sometimes this piece can feel a little tricky depending on the client's hairline. Her hairline goes straight down, some client's angles back a little bit. So sometimes it can feel a little tricky. Just hold that foil in place and sometimes you need to practice this. And in fact, if you need to practice this, practicing on a doll head is actually a really great place to practice this technique because a doll head's hairline is always weird and it's sometimes a little bit tricky. So um, if you do need to practice this, try it on a doll head because it will make it a lot easier when you get to a regular client. All right, so I'm gonna do one more piece kind of here around our hairline. Um, I'm gonna do about half an inch away from that piece that we already did here and grabbing that in. And one thing that with color on the roots already, you gotta keep it clean. A lot of times it can get overwhelming and out of control and feeling really messy. So just keep it as clean as you can. Um, if that means you need to go back in and clean things up, then do that because nothing's worse than having a mess all over the place with this color. So just keep it really clean. And this one I am gonna drag down just a little bit or resaturate here with our color. And then I'm going to go back in with our lightener. Obviously you guys can see I used a longer foil. She's got a little bit more hair here. Um, and I am gonna fully, fully saturate this one because we are gonna keep that hair. We're not cutting it out. So um, again, being aware of what kind of cut I'm gonna put into the hair also is really key when uh, designing that color. So one thing that you wanna be really gentle of too is when you have a little bit thicker of a section like this, making sure to A, fully saturate that bottom area, but then really blending in this top area. And one thing that I like to do is I'll take a clean dry brush and sometimes just go through and kind of smooth that out wiping it off in between each section. That'll help kind of keep it clean. Now I'm not gonna fold this one up, I'm actually going to place a foil over it. So we're gonna place that right here, got a little lightener on my glove there. Place that down, and this is ensuring so that I'm not like squishing it back up. This hair is a little bit longer, a little bit thicker here, so keeping that foliage piece. And if you guys have watched any of my other foliage videos, you knew that I do that there. So um, again, every client's different, we're customizing it to her. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do with the rest of the hair. All right, so I did the same thing on this side and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take kind of pivoting sections all the way around kind of this top area just to give her some dimension in her pieces. So I'm gonna just do some foliage pieces and I'm going to increase the amount of sections that I'm taking a, a 
how wide I'm taking the sections, I should say. So this one's about three quarters from the first one. We're gonna do about an inch, about an inch and a half until we get kind of all the way around. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, doing all diagonal back. So this is definitely different sectioning than I normally do. Um, but now that we've gotten kind of towards this back section, I am going to tease the hair. Now I did use a wider tooth uh, rat tail comb versus my fine tooth one that I typically use. And the reason why is I don't wanna tangle her hair. So I'm just gonna kind of lightly tease it in here but I'll show you guys real quick. As I lay down my foil, what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that the color touched all that hair in there. So I am going to go back in with my color and just really squish that in there. And I know that you guys might think, oh, aren't you gonna get bleed marks or spots or anything? And we're actually not because we're going through and really saturating it. We didn't tease it too hard in the beginning. So um, the color will actually help detangle it as well, which I know sounds kind of weird, but trust me, it works. So that's gonna be our blending agent. And again, I'm kind of keeping this lower just down towards the end, just to give her a little bit of dimension in her hair because she didn't really have any in this back area. Um, and I also wanna keep this low maintenance for her as well. So this is the reason why I'm doing it this way, going through fully, fully saturating it all the way into those ends. And then I'm gonna blend up into that blending agent, which is our root color. Now, one thing that you do wanna be really careful of is do not blend that lightener up into that teased section. So just make sure to um, have a little bit of barrier in between that teased area and then where you applied your color to blend it up into. That could cause spottiness and you definitely don't want that. So I'm just kind of blending it up into that area just below the teased area. You guys can see that here. Uh, making sure to really saturate it and then applying my foil over the top of it so that it uh, lays really nicely. So I'm gonna continue this going back, taking all diagonal back sectioning, um, kind of pivoting into that back crown area and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I just need you by my side Lately I've been thinking baby We could get away and never So now I've done all diagonal backs, and so I'm kind of into this little back triangle, and I could do two more diagonal backs, but I don't want it to kind of come right here. I actually want it to be kind of a veil laying over it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of take this triangle piece, which is kind of exactly where the apex of her head is. I'm gonna kind of take this just a little bit shorter, shallower here, right here. Lay that up here, and I'm actually gonna do two sections. So we'll do one here. This will be my second one. We'll clip this out of the way. And I'm gonna do how I normally do my foliage in the back. So I'm just gonna go straight across and weave this out here. Tease like I normally do. And so obviously this is very similar to my regular foliage. The only thing is I'm working backwards starting in the front and going to the back because I was really wanting to have that brightness around the face. And I want you guys to know too, I'm only going to lift this to about a level seven, eight, probably a level eight, we'll probably tone it back down to a level seven. Um, we're, we did our base at about a five, and so I don't really want it to be super bright, super blonde. It's gonna be more of a coppery kind of look. So I'm okay with it um, being a little bit on the deeper side. It doesn't need to be super, super light. So um, definitely just something to keep in mind as I am lightening that I'm not gonna be lifting her to blonde, um, just so you guys know we're actually just adding in a little bit of dimension versus like super light pieces. All right, so I'm gonna do these last two foils. We'll place this up here. And this is just gonna be kind of that veil to give it a little bit of dimension in her hair um, so that it, it lays really nicely and gets some more movement into it. and you guys can see there's definitely some color that kind of got squished so what I like to do is I actually like to get my hands kind of wet first and I go through and I massage the scalp area and because we put that pre-guard um, barrier cream in there it's going to just eliminate all of those stains so before I even put water on the hair I always do this with all of my root touch-up cl uh, clients and because we had so much color on there um, we're not having to worry about it drying out or like drying on the the face so by massaging it in actually emulsifies it and gets it off the hair or off the skin and then we're gonna go through and rinse it See, there's no color left on her skin. 
so awesome. All right, so I'm gonna mix up her toner and I'm actually really liking the shade that it is, so I'm just gonna enhance it just a little bit. So I'm actually gonna be doing 6CB and 9G and I kinda want it to be like a level seven, eight. Um, she's got some warmth in there, but I love the CB series in Shades EQ. It's not utilized a lot, love it. I don't have a 7CB with me, so that's why I'm mixing 6CB and 9G. Otherwise, I probably would've done like a 7CB and an eight, but that's okay. So I'm gonna do just about half three quarters of an ounce, six CB, and then about three quarters of an ounce, maybe a little bit more of the nine G because I do want it to live on the lighter side. And I'm excited to see how this uh, toner turns out. It's, it's totally different than what I normally do, but um, I'm really excited because I think it's gonna be a beautiful tone. So let's go at it. All right, so I'm gonna apply her toner just kind of to where her lighter pieces were. And like I said, I'm not really having to correct any of this, I'm just kind of enhancing it a little bit. So we're just gonna apply it all the way through her hair. Um, you guys can see some of those ends got a little bit lighter than kind of where I wanted them to be. Um, so just gonna kind of uh, bring them back to life with this toner. And here is our final results. You guys can see how beautiful and shiny it is, how much more dimension it has. Obviously we added a lot more layers and just kind of lift in her haircut, but I love how the color turned out. I think it's got such a beautiful color melt kind of vibe. Obviously we went in, we did her roots and then went through with that foliage piece and toned it all. But the cool thing is we utilized some of her natural color that was already left in there to also create dimension by darkening up her root just a little bit. So I love how it turned out. I think it looks so shiny, so healthy, and I love to hear what you guys think. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this YouTube video. I had so much fun creating it, and I have to say I'm loving how her hair color turned out. I think it was so gorgeous and beautiful, and I hope that this helped you guys with your redhead or copper clients that a lot of times we think it's gonna be so different and so much harder but in reality, it's very similar to our brunette clients. You're just toning them slightly different. So I hope that this gave you guys some really great insight on how to do that red hair and how to kind of incorporate that foliage with a uh, root touch up or blending in the gray surface. As always, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, make sure to hit it right now because I'm gonna be releasing some really cool videos coming up and you don't wanna miss out. Also, make sure to come over to Instagram and tell me that you watched this video. I love reading DMs from you guys and I really would love to hear from you if you like this video and what you wanna see more of. So make sure to come on over to Instagram and give me a DM, send me some love, and just come over and say hi. Last but not least, I want you to do one more thing for me. Will you comment below letting me know I literally cannot talk right now. And last but not least, if you would do one last thing for me, go ahead and leave a comment below letting me know how many redhead clients you have in your clientele. I think a lot of times we think that nobody else does redheads, but in reality, quite a few people do. So I'd love to know, do you have a lot of redheads? Do you not? Um, and if they're incorporated into your clientele or what else you specialize in. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new and I can't wait to see you next time.